Okay. I'm going to play around with some of this camera equipment. Make this brighter. For my oily face. Okay. So, playing around here. If I could get some support if you're on Facebook watching this, if you could jump over to YouTube and watch this. I'm playing around with the numbers on the back end. So the likes of the video helps with the YouTube algorithms and the comments do as well. So I'm attempting to do somewhat of a Facebook, YouTube social experiment with where the traffic is coming from. So it's not like typical YouTube. But anyways, so if you can go over there, that would be helpful. If you're already on YouTube, thanks for being here. And I'm going to ask some questions. And if you could put it in the comments, I'm actually going to respond and potentially do another video. So there was a friend when I made the last post who asked to talk about how, what got you into this and why you stayed. So thanks, Adam Messler. I hope this is your last name right. And I'm just going to shoot from the hip because that's what I do best. So this meaning events and event production. So the last place that I worked at was Walter Productions and Walter Warehouse, which is a organized for-profit business. And I ended up being the Walter Warehouse manager, but I came on as an operations specialist and I didn't even know what that meant. I thought maybe it was just a, a made up word. <laughs> That is basically get on a computer and, and do everything is how I kind of took it. But um, yeah, it, it started as a, a Burning Man camp. And then it, Walter Warehouse is a place where all of the art cars were stored. And there were parties that were thrown. And I was ecstatic to do something that was a paying gig. So thank you to the founder for allowing that opportunity because I learned so much from that and I'm super grateful for it. That's not where I started and that's not where my passion came from. The first time I really fell in love with events, I was going through a very shitty time. The year 2008, I had just turned 18 years old and had spent one year out in the real world. I'm not talking about like the default world, like Burning Man people talk about. I was in three years of residential lockdown treatment centers where I was housed with three other women and like we would have to sit in a room chair structure which means like you don't move and you have to be either reading a book or something to earn your points off and you would earn off like two points every half hour and you would earn like 20 points for having like a bump in your ponytail. So that was my introduction into the world and <laughs> When I got my first apartment at 18 with my high school boyfriend, we ended up breaking up while in my first place, our first place, and was introduced to some people that showed me <laughs> drugs, basically. And one of those drugs was ecstasy and started telling me about rapes because I had no idea what that was. I lived under a rock from being in treatment centers most of my teenage years and we went to our our first rave and the feeling of walking in and people being extremely welcoming probably because they were on ecstasy was something that I had never seen before and from just having so many episodes in my personal life and seeing that open arms and a sense of community it was something that made me fall in love with gatherings and a lot of people coming together instantly. And I, I don't even know if I'm explaining it correctly, but it felt like a big breath of fresh air and people were coming up to me and telling me how great I was, strangers who didn't know my name and explaining to me what plur was, peace, love, unity respect and some people say responsibility and it was a spot that also saved me when I lost that apartment and became homeless. So I would go to raves and then I would stay at after parties and do people's dishes 
and they would ask me to stay longer into like Monday or Tuesday and that became somewhat of like a survival technique that I would use in order to have a place in Arizona where it's super hot outside and you sleep on the ground and cops come and kick you awake. So I was homeless for two years and in those two years um, this rave community is what kept me alive. And <laughs> I think my operational efficiency comes from my space because if I was about to be kicked out of someone's living room, like you, you've been sleeping here for too long, it's about time for you to go, Momo, then I would hop on my space and see if there was anybody that would allow me to crash for a couple of days so I could do their dishes or what have you. But um, yeah, it, it just became a weird tool that I used and it, it allowed me to figure out that community was a huge value to me in a time that was extremely difficult because <laughs> when it comes to being homeless there's a lot of feelings of rejection that you have when you're just completely alone and asking strangers for money on Mill Avenue <laughs> and then there's the feeling of wow there's nothing to lose so fuck it no one's gonna remember you anyways right so that's my love of events. My my first event, I was still 18 years old, and I was really excited for my 19th birthday, which I almost didn't make it to, <laughs> and um, there was no event going on. There was no rave, and I was like, this is bullshit, and <laughs> there was um, on 32nd Street, right by the K Christie's Cabaret, and a Jack in the Box, there were raves that used to get thrown there, and I was like, oh, we'll just, we'll just throw a party there had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> so, uh, put it on, I believe, don't stay in or MySpace and was like, yeah, we'll just do a party. Didn't talk to the owners or anything or the people managing this used store it and eventually did. I had a partner who was like, yeah, I'll just front the money and make sure that we can give them the thousand dollar venue fee. And then we'll talk to our DJ friends and we'll open up some of the storage units and play inside there. I was like, cool, this works. The friend who was the investor ended up just not responding the day of. So I gathered everybody up at the Jack in the Box and was like, give me your money. I'm going to give them everything that we have all together. And then we're going to have a party. <laughs> it was super stressful. And I don't know why all these people gave me their money and let me run away over to the venue because a lot of people in the rave scene were robbing each other so it ended up working out um <laughs> joe martin <laughs> he, i think he was working the door that day because i just wanted to party and i was dumb and <laughs> that was my my first crack at it so the the feeling of community has become so important to me and i didn't know that community was a value of mine until I ended up getting out of that scene, going to school, and then asking someone to mentor me and gave me these worksheets. And uh, Sarah Groves, by the way, shout out for this, this microphone, Sarah, um, completed these. And um, it just asked me about my goals for my life, the next 10 years, five years for myself, and then defining my values and I think it was like 27 when I defined I live my life by honesty meaningful work and community and I just added responsibility into there so with honesty I think sometimes maybe I'm too honest it I guess maybe there's a risk of me telling stories about drugs or like being a dancer on YouTube but I want to create my own life in a community where I can be myself and feel safe enough to do that. In the recent being let go, I've been thinking for the past year, like, is it events that I'm really extremely passionate about or is it feeling safe enough to be who the fuck I am? <laughs> and I'm leaning into that more with the Burning Man camp that I camp with, um, instead of going to the Cool Kids Club with Camp Walter, I have decided to put more of my work in the last six years into the Bureau of Erotic Discourse, BED. And what that does is promote consent culture at Burning Man, and we're taking it out of Burning Man and into the default world. 
And it's making me realize that I'm staying because I care about sharing this feeling of safety with other people, especially in a very vulnerable environment. I know being a woman, sexual assault is something that like we just innately fear. If you walk down the street, I don't wear shorts as often as I can living on the west side because it's making you more vulnerable and it's not something, a world that I want to live in or to pretend like, ooh, I'm so tough. Because I do believe that like toughness comes from being vulnerable. So if we can be safe enough to just be who the fuck we are, that's where I feel and I think I'm discovering my actual passionate lies passion lies so events and gathering is kind of where the risk gets higher especially if we're in somewhat of a burning man community or a club it doesn't matter and being a woman or non-binary some sort of vulnerable group and that doesn't omit men because men have gone through feelings of sexual assault or being touched in ways that they don't want to if we can cultivate our culture to be a safer environment I think that's why I say so really thanks for the the prompt on that one if you guys watch this all the way through let me know what you want me to talk about next because I'm playing around with the back end that sounded weird <laughs> I'm playing around with the analytics on YouTube on the back end so if there's anything that I can learn to put it in the comments I'm gonna respond in trying to learn so Hopefully that wasn't too open. Fuck it. Honesty is my first value. So love you guys.